Welcome to Retro Crisis. Please support the channel by subscribing and sharing these videos. One of the coolest byproducts when using an original Sega Mega Drive on a CRT TV is that developers were able to produce these pretty cool transparency effects. However, when using an emulator on an HDMI flat panel screen, the flat panel doesn't quite distort the signal in the way a CRT TV would. One of the negative side effects of this is some of the transparency effects that the original developers intended on kind of get lost in the mix. So you might be wondering what I'm talking about, so I'll do my best to illustrate my example. So if you load up Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and go to this particular waterfall section on Green Hill Zone, and at first glance, you may think nothing is wrong, but in fact you'll notice that the waterfall is a series of vertical lines. On original Mega Drive hardware on a CRT screen, this particular waterfall would actually look like a beautiful rippling waterfall, which would appear transparent. However, when you're using an emulator on a high definition flat panel screen, every single one of these pixels is visible and you kind of lose the transparency effect a little bit. Now, in order to recreate what an original Mega Drive would have output on a CRT screen, I've resorted to using shaders. Now, if you don't know what a shader is, please do check the link in the description below. Uh, I have a, an entire video dedicated to shaders and how to use them. Now, I've tried many different shaders to see if I could recreate that transparency effect, and I've found two that I think come pretty close. The first of these is called GTU V050. Here it is in action. Now what previously appeared as aggressive vertical streaks of pixels kind of now blend and blur a little bit and you kind of replicate a little bit of that transparency effect and it looks a bit more like a consistent sheet of water rather than a series of vertical lines. You'll also know the entire screen actually goes a little bit more blurry and you'll also see some faint scan lines. To some of you this might actually remind you of what the game looked like on a CRT screen back in the day. The second shader I thought did a pretty good job is one by Cyberlab called Bleeding and Transparency PVM Edition. Now this one I think actually does a fantastic job of blurring all the vertical lines of water into creating the illusion of one consistent waterfall. Sadly, it also kind of darkens the entire image. I'm not sure if you can compensate this by maybe adjusting the luminance or brightness values on your TV screen, but putting the darkness aside, I actually think this shader comes the closest to replicating what original Mega Drive hardware would have output onto a CRT screen. Let's put the three of these side by side to give you a, a better illustration of how the shaders are working. In the middle I've got the original pixel perfect emulator output. As you can tell the vertical streaks are much more pronounced and a bit more aggressive. On the left hand side I've got the GTU V050 filter which slightly blurs the image a little bit but you can still kind of see some of the verticality in those uh, pixels. And on the right hand side the darkest of them all is the Cyberlab filter which I think actually does the best job in hiding all the vertical lines and creating the illusion of one continuous pane of water. And once more on the left we've got the original emulator output and on the right we have GTU V050. And again emulator on the left hand side and the Cyberlab filter on the right. Here's another popular example of transparencies. This is a stage from Streets of Rage 2 now, currently Blaze is standing under a spotlight. It's not the most flattering image, but if you zoom in, you can see all the little pixels creating some kind of dithering effect. Now, using the GTU V050 filter, you see that some of those pixels are less pronounced and you get a much clearer transparency effect whilst retaining some of the brightness of the screen. However, if you look in the background and you look at that brick pillar, you can still see some of the uh, checkerboarding on the bricks. Now if you use the Cyberlab filter, the entire picture does get a little darker, but if you look at the transparency, I think it's a bit more convincing. And if you look at the bricks in the background, you don't really get any of those checkerboarding effects. And I also like the scan lines on the Cyberlab shader, more so than the GTU shader. Now here's all of them side by side. In the middle you have the original emulator output, on the left you have the GTU shader, and on the far right you have the Cyberlab shader. I think the Cyberlab shader does the best job of showing the contrast between Blaze standing and Blaze being covered halfway by a spotlight. If there's a shader that you actually use for um, the transparency effect that I've not mentioned in this video, please drop it in the comments section as I would absolutely love to uh, try out that shader. I hope this video was useful. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.